Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna look at a recent study on vegan bone density out of Australia. As the title shows, there's no difference. And so we're gonna have to look at this study in detail, of course, see what's going on, as well as just how it fits in with this previous vegan bone scare that we saw in the media and in various studies that were worrying. Is there some flaw in the vegan diet nutritionally or are all of these bone scare articles just not what they're cracked up to be? Oh, and then of course we're gonna be looking at you know, whether or not this is body composition related, some other confounder. We'll look at all of it, so let's just go. All right, so every once in a while I randomly check recent vegan studies on PubMed and you know sometimes there's nothing, but this time I was like, oh, here's a study that I haven't seen anybody else mention unless I've missed it. And it's this one out of Australia in Frontier's Nutrition Journal. And in case you're worried about the funding, it was literally a pilot grant for the health department at the University of Newcastle. So, you know, not by big broccoli or plant milk or whatever. The study looked at 240 people and split them into several groups. You have your vegans, your lacto-ovo vegetarians, your pescatarians, your semi-vegetarians, which are essentially flexitarian and your regular old meat eaters. Now the groups were actually very similar in quite a few ways, looking to say vitamin D status. The vegans actually trended slightly higher, but it wasn't statistically significantly different. And then in terms of body metrics, more similar than you might expect in then previous studies in that the BMI was not statistically significantly different. The vegans, for example, had a statistically significant lower waist circumference, smaller waist circumference than the meat eaters. So more of an hourglass figure. And while the vegans and some of the other groups were like one BMI point lower than the meat eaters. The meat eaters did average in the overweight category barely, while the other groups averaged in the normal weight category, just worth mentioning. And people tend to say, oh, vegans aren't gonna have any muscle mass, they'll have the lowest muscle mass. Well, they did look at lean mass, which includes muscle. And yeah, for whatever reason, the lacto-ovo vegetarians had, quote, significantly lower lean mass compared to regular meat eaters and vegans. So vegans are just getting more ripped now than vegetarians. And to be fair, the vegans were a bit lower in age, but that is one of the basic things that they adjust for, as well as things like height, physical activity, gender, etc. Now for those results, looking at the vegans compared to your regular meat eaters, there was no difference in the bone mineral density of their bodies or the T-score, which is a metric of how much bone loss you've had like since the age of 30. And it also takes into account BMI. And you can see this chart here, which shows which ones are good rates to have and which aren't. And there was one pretty meaningful positive trend for the vegans, in my opinion. However, it again, didn't reach statistical significance. And that was that looking at that T-score, they separated the amount of people that qualify as having osteoporosis or osteopenia. And the vegans were by far the lowest in that group at 6%. Well, other groups were generally between 15 and 25%. And in the unadjusted data, which I'll admit isn't fully fair, the vegans actually did do the best. I mean, they mentioned this in the findings, so I might as well echo it. They say, quote, in the unadjusted model, vegans had a significant higher whole body bone mineral density than the pesco vegetarians. And if you had any issues with that age difference with the vegans in the supplementary material, they actually compared over 50 and under 50 groups and they still did not find a difference for vegans. All right, so now continuing along the investigatory line of who has the most bone in their bones, uh, the study actually cited a meta-analysis saying, hey, the bone mineral density in vegans was lower, and this was part of the reason we wanted to investigate this whole issue. And this is a meta-analysis that has fairly been used to you know, attack vegan health, I would say. All of the positives that we have, whether it's cardiovascular disease, lower cancer rates, lower inflammation, lower diabetes, hypertension, etc., uh, the bone stuff was turning out to not look as good. And you know, some plant-based doctors were just like, "Yeah, we've kind of failed in this area." But where I've had an issue with this is that BMI is just so closely related to bone density. You know, the more weight you have on bones, the more your bones build up to respond to that. Now, here's a chart that really demonstrates that. You know, there are certain BMI shifts where you've got like a 10% difference in bone density over just five points in BMI. So I went ahead and looked through all of the studies in the meta-analysis that had vegans in them and what they did in terms of BMI, whether they adjusted what the BMI differences were. And I have to say, uh, it's what I was afraid of. Now, generally, there either was not a statistically significant bone mineral density difference in these studies, or there was a pretty big BMI difference. 
A good example is this smaller study where they did lump some vegans and vegetarians together for this quote, but it illustrates this pretty well, saying that bone mineral density appeared lower in vegetarians. However, that wasn't statistically significant if you're talking p-value less than 0.05. But they say, although this was not apparent with weight as a covariate, so when they adjusted for BMI, it completely went away. Here's another study in the meta-analysis shows bone mineral density being worse for vegans. Well, looking at it, it was six vegans, wasn't statistically significant in terms of bone mass, and we had you know several point difference in BMI, which can equate to about 15 pounds different and no adjustment for that. Now, lightning fast through this, we have another one on eight vegans in 1998. Yeah, a lot of these are over 20 years old. They had lower BMI and still not statistically significant for bone mineral density difference anyway. Or for this one, it's bigger with 28 vegans who had you know, a BMI of one point difference, but again, not statistically significantly different for bone mineral density. And next we have a study that I have mentioned before, and this one is on Buddhist nuns. And they just straight up found no difference between vegans and omnivore for various bone mineral density things, talking lower spine, hip, and whole body. And they actually looked at a T-score as well, again, that osteoporosis rating, and they say that, hey, the vegans had a lower trend in osteoporosis than the meat eaters, though it wasn't statistically significant. Then we have what is probably the biggest study, another one on nuns, on 250 Taiwanese women, and we can see that, again, the vegans were not statistically significantly different. P-value 0.15, what? And perhaps the one that skews it the most was this study on like 18 raw vegans. And you know, I, I do put out some warnings about raw vegan diets, but I could even defend them here by saying they were a full five BMI points lower and that was completely not adjusted for, so they did have lower bone mineral density. So zooming out on this meta-analysis, it seems like you could just grab two different groups of people, one with lower BMI than the other, and say, look, this one has a lower bone mineral density. There must be a problem with them. However, it would be a little bit dishonest to not take the causal BMI lowering effect of vegan diets and say there's no potential downside. Uh, yeah, lowering your rates of obesity lowers your risk of all of these cancers and heart disease and all of these things, but it's true, when you get down to a lower BMI, especially at a certain point, you can increase your risk for fractures. But is that a full valid point against a vegan diet or just the reality of having a lower BMI from whatever diet? And then really fast, we can put this into the context of bone fractures in general. That's something that people are concerned about. And in previous ones, again, I believe there's a BMI connection here because when you look at people with a BMI over 22.5 that are vegan versus non-vegan, vegan, the relationship for fracture risk disappears. For those vegans under 22.5 BMI with higher fracture risk, the distribution of vegans could include more underweight people than the under 22.5 meat eaters. So perhaps BMI needs to be further broken up. And so I believe it's possible that, yeah, there are some vegans that either have really poor nutrition and are not getting what they need. And those are the ones that are at higher risk who are also perhaps very low BMI or even perhaps going to veganism to match ask their eating disorder and being like borderline anorexic. And also how you can have you know two different groups that are below that BMI of 23.5 and have a very different distribution. You might have some people that are very much on the lower end, which would put them at an increased risk of falling and getting a fracture. And then there's also just other things that aren't controlled for. Like for example, I've broken bones doing extreme sports. People who are vegetarian or vegan might be at a higher socioeconomic status and more likely to just go skiing or whatever. And I broke one of those bones not being vegan. So. so perhaps this is a good reminder for vegans who have low BMI or vegans who are aging and are afraid of this that could increase their BMI to just you know go ahead and put effort into doing that. Lift heavy, get stronger legs, get a little bit more padding down at your hip, etc. And to that Australian study, seeing that vitamin D trending higher in another study I mean, this has been happening more and more lately is awesome as well as seeing those B12 rates trending even higher in multiple studies. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. And yeah, the BMI being the same and the bone mineral density being the same, you know, points to a picture here of it's BMI related. And then the fracture risk, of course, would also be BMI related or the bone mineral density is the same. And there's another factor that's lifestyle related. So what I would like to see is a larger study looking at vegans who are particularly BMI matched to non-vegans and matched as best as possible and just look at that bone mineral density and see if we really see a difference. Because frankly, that meta-analysis was relying on you know, studies that are largely over 20 years old and very small and just 
not the best data. So let me know down below what you think about all of this. Have you had a million bone fractures the moment you went vegan? Uh, <laughs> share below. Or have you gotten a bone mineral density thing and have any before and afters? That'd be interesting as well, although bone mineral density does tend to go down with age anyway. So yeah, feel free to like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.